Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, I'll be showing you another five legendary items that you'll want to have at level 53, so you can be as powerful as you can be. These guns are great and are widely considered some of the best in the game. I'll also explain why they are so good, as well as tell you who you need to kill to get one yourself. If this video helped you out, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like. It motivates me to upload videos, and let's dive in. The first gun you'll want to have in your end game build is the Maggie, which has an increased chance to drop from Tremendous Rex, the final boss of the Cistern of Slaughter. The Maggie is a shotgun and pistol combined, similar to the Purple Mashes, but with a larger mag size and one extra pellet. It is a powerful pistol that deals high damage up over 3,500 per shot, which is a lot for a pistol, and a lot for any gun in general. Because it's a Jacob's weapon, it also has the typical Jacob's bonuses of high critical hit damage and ricocheting bullets. It works well at proccing kill skills if you're flat with a Bounty Hunter class mod, and that's the same for Zane and his Seeing Dead class mod. The best prefix is dastardly for the increased critical hit damage and you'll find it working great right out of the bag on whoever you play as. Nothing really comes close to it on the legendary pistol front, and it works well in all builds. The next weapon you'll want to have at your disposal if you don't have it already is the Kybes Worth, a Mali 1 SMG that can only be obtained by defeating Wotan at the end of the Mali 1 takedown. The Kybes Worth is a great gun that is unique in the way it performs well both offensively and defensively. After killing an enemy with the card's worth, a healing aura will spawn where they fell. This effect happens every 10 seconds and is powerful enough to keep you alive under heavy fire. They will only show up when you kill them with direct damage however, so you won't see them as much as you should. Offensively, the card's worth deals good damage, has a high fire rate, and has the typically good damage over time of melee 1 weapons. It shoots two bullets in a linear pattern at the cost of just one ammo. And if you're looking for the most powerful and versatile variant, you want the binary one with radiation as one of its elements. The binary version doesn't fire four projectiles like you might guess, just the three at the cost of two ammo. Because of its unique pallet spread, the Kybes Worth is best at the far reaches of close ranges, as point blank will cause pallets to sometimes miss. It deals splash damage, which is great for Moe's, and it's great on her, but I also find it to hone in on critical points like nothing else, which makes it very easy to deal its maximum damage potential. Another gun that you want somewhere in the mix is the Ion Cannon, the highest DPS weapon in the game. It can only be dropped by the Fabricator, a DLC 1 boss who you fight at the end of Jack's Secret. It comes in every single element, including non-elemental, and deals more damage the longer you hold down the trigger, up until a point. The Iron Cannon did receive a big nerf to its ammo count, which raised the minimum ammo consumption per shot from 1 to 6, but an Annex version will only cost you an extra bullet for almost double the damage, and that's the variant you should be aiming for. Ammo won't be much of an issue if you have ways to regen it, which is possible on all Vault Hunters, but perhaps easiest on Moe's and she will also be able to leverage its splash damage to make it even more powerful. With so much power though, the Iron Cannon isn't really suited to mobbing. It's more of a boss killing machine, and you can see a sample of that here against Captain Tron. The combination of high splash damage and splash damage radius make it an absolute monster, easily capable of hitting crits and downing even the toughest opponents before you empty its total ammo count. Now onto a shield, the Recharger, which has an increased chance to drop from Urist Mick Enforcer, who you can find in the underground of Lectra City at this point on the map. The Recharger is a great shield and is the best in the game when it comes to survivability. This is thanks to its effect which causes the shield to instantly recharge once broken. This essentially means you have to down twice before you end the fight for your life, which is a great backup to have and if you're struggling to stay alive, this is the shield for you. This effect does have a 20 second cooldown, but that is often long enough for you to steady yourself again and get your health back. The Recharger is one piece of gear that will keep you alive more than any other. 
and unless your shield breaks more than twice every 20 seconds, you won't find yourself going down. The last weapon in this list that you should be looking to get is the Redistributor, which is another gun that can only be dropped during the Maliwan takedown, but is dropped by both the Valkyrie squad and Wotan. There isn't a gun in the game that is more suited to a particular Vault Hunter than the Redistributor is to Zayn, so if you're Zayn, you'll definitely want to pick this up. It's more suited on Zayn because of its effect that causes every 7th shot to be amped and chained to nearby enemies. The important thing here is the chaining. With Zayn's barrier, he fires amp shots, so rather than every 6th shot chaining, every single shot chains, and it effectively makes it 6 times more powerful although the 7th shot will still be the only one receiving the damage bonus. It's not just good on Zane though, as you can see here from this gameplay on Amara. The Redistributor is a great gun on any Vault Hunter. It's just that Zane overshadows this, which is a little unfair as it's not an only Zane weapon. It would do work while mobbing for everyone. And like the Brainstormer and Recursion in the last video, it's better the more enemies there are around. It's not particularly great one-on-one, -on -one, although it is still good. It can come in all the elements, with its best element being radiation, due to radiation being the best all-round element, but also because of its chain effect, which helps the radiation damage feed off each enemy and grow the more enemies there are around. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and it gave you some idea of what items you might want to add to your build. If it did, consider dropping a like or subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one.